Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY22 earnings conference call of Blue Star Limited. We have with us today from the management, Mr. B. Thyagarajan, Managing Director, Blue Star Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. B. Thyagarajan. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure interacting with you. Uh, I have stepped in because, as you are aware, uh, Ms. Neeraj Basur uh, has decided to leave uh, Blue Star. So I wanted to provide continuity before the next group CFO comes in. So perhaps this quarter, next quarter, uh, I will interact with you uh, over this, uh, uh, you know, quarterly uh, investor call. Uh, first, I would like to place on record uh, my. Uh, deep sense of uh, appreciation and gratitude to Mr. Neeraj Bazu and Mr. Veer Adwani joins me in uh, conveying the same. Uh, he, for over eight years, did an exceptional job in uh, ca taking our uh, corporate financial services function to a next level. Uh, he played an active role in implementation of uh, digitalization programs, uh, the enterprise risk management framework, and uh, the most importantly, the operational support in uh, bringing quite a few businesses well under control in terms of ROC is concerned. Um, so we will miss him and uh, we wish him all the very best. And uh, after my opening remarks, he is still going to continue with the highlights of the quarter. Uh, before that, I, I wanted to also share with you that uh, the quarterly results that you have seen, uh, you must look at uh, with one perspective, that uh, these results are achieved despite losing the summer season. And uh, easily, uh, in my estimate, we, we should deliver something like uh, rupees 75 to 80 crores uh, if the summer season of 2021 would have been an active uh, quarter, but that is uh, unfortunate. But we will, uh, we will uh, look at the results uh, with that particular perspective that this was possible even though the summer season was lost. The second important thing is that we had a huge commodity price increase and consequently the price increases implemented by Blue Star. On April 1, 2021, again in July 1, 2021, again in October 1, 2021, and we continued with that, and now in, uh, on 1st April 2022, we have implemented a price increase. So the, the commodity price increase is so much, and despite price increase, we have uh, delivered lesser margin as far as the cooling product segment is concerned. The other important highlight is also the fact that the, throughout the year, the free cash flows is excellent and you will see when Neeraj speaks uh, how we have performed in terms of uh, the cash flows and the borrowings. Uh, another important aspect is that uh, the, the every business, uh, whether it is room air conditioners or commercial refrigeration or it is electromechanical projects, commercial air conditioning, professional electronics, each and every business uh, performed exceedingly well. Lastly, uh, the outlook is, uh, uh, you, you have the numbers of last quarter and I think uh, you would have gone through, you would have analyzed it in your own way. Uh, but the important thing that I want to share is the April had gone on well, the outlook for Q1 is uh, very good and uh, despite the uh, interest rate hikes, uh, I still hold an optimistic view uh, as far as the room air conditioner demand is uh, concerned. Uh, with that, I will uh, hand it over to Mr. Neeraj Basur for the opening remarks on the results, and I will be happy to answer any questions later. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tyagarajan, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, it's uh, been a privilege and an honor for me 
all these years to have uh, interacted with you so very regularly. And uh, it's been a great learning uh, journey for me as well. And I wish you all the best uh, in your respective uh, endeavors. So as Mr. Tyagrajan has already set the context, I'll uh, now walk you through uh, the key highlights of our uh, financial results and business results for quarter four and the full year. First, let me take you through the financial highlights. <clears throat> uh, the momentum that we gained in Q3 FY22 continued in Q4 FY22 despite a three-week disruption caused by uh, the Omicron variant. The demand for our offerings across various segments not only continued but also accelerated in the month of March. Further, the policy announcements in the Union Budget 2022-23 resulted in positive business sentiment. The early onset of summer in some parts of the country also helped revenue growth in several product categories. In this backdrop, the company delivered record revenue and profits in Q4 FY22 and ended the year on a high note despite losing the 2021 summer season. Financial highlights for the quarter ended March 31, 22 on a consolidated basis are as follows. First, Revenue from operations for Q4 FY22 grew 39.5% to Rs. 2247.58 crore as compared to Rs. 1611.56 crore in Q4 FY21. EBITDA excluding other income and finance income for Q4 FY22 was Rs. 142.95 crore, EBITDA margin of 6.4% of revenue as compared to rupees 101.81 crore, EBITDA margin 6.3% of revenue for Q4 FY21. <clears throat> Profit before tax grew 9.2% to rupees 113.91 crore in Q4 FY22, as compared to rupees 104.32 crore in Q4 FY21. Net profit for Q4 FY22 grew by 12% to rupees 76.27 crore as compared to Rs. 68.09 crore in Q4 FY21. Healthy cash from operations enabled a reduction of Rs. 97.9 crore in net borrowings in Q4 FY22 over Q4, Q3 FY22. Financial highlights for the full year ended March 31, 22 on a consolidated basis are as follows. Revenue from operations for FY22 grew 41.8% to Rs. 6045.58 crore as compared to rupees 4263.59 crore in FY21. <clears throat> EBITDA excluding other income and finance income for FY22 was rupees 346.47 crore, EBITDA margin of 5.7% of revenue as compared to rupees 239.81 crore, EBITDA margin 5.6% of revenue in FY21. Despite pressure on growth margin, Due to escalation in commodity prices, the impact of scale enabled preservation of profitability levels. PBT before exceptional items grew 69.8% to Rs. 250.90 crore in FY22 as compared to Rs. 147.75 crore in FY21. Tax expense for FY22 was Rs. 82.9 crore as compared to Rs. 47.09 crore in FY21. Net profit for FY22 grew by 66.9% to Rs. 168 crore as compared to Rs. 100.66 crore in FY21. The company has returned to growth path and a dividend of Rs. 10 per share has been recommended by the board. Carried forward order book as of March 31, 2022 grew by 10.2% to Rs. 3253.30 crore compared to Rs. 2952.42 crore as on March 31, 2021. Due to planned increase in inventory levels owing to advancement in the procurement of long lead raw materials and components in order to de-risk supply chain constraints and capacity expansion capital investments in our new manufacturing projects at WADA and Swiss City, the capital employed as on March 31, 2022 stood at Rs. 1087.69 crore, which as of March 31, 2021 was Rs. 736.41 crore. Our strong operating cash flows ensured that we ended March 31, 2022 
at a moderate net borrowing levels of rupees 67.14 crore resulting in a debt equity ratio of 0.07 <clears throat> march 31 2021 we had a net cash balance positive balance of rupees 151.45 crore we had raised rupees 350 crore through issue of unsecured non convertible debentures or ncd in june 2020 in order to strengthen our balance sheet with a repayment tenor of 3 years and a call option to repay 50% of the ncd in may 2022 due to our strong current fund position after meeting all the capacity expansion capital expenditure we propose to exercise the said call option and reduce the residual ncd obligation by the end of may 2022 I'll walk you through the business highlights for Q4 FY22 now. Segment one: electromechanical projects and commercial air conditioning systems. Segment one revenue grew 45.6 percent to rupees 1135.97 crore in Q4 FY22, as compared to rupees 779.96 crore in Q4 FY21. Segment result was rupees 75.84 crore, which is 6.7 percent of revenue. in q4 fy22 as against a profit of rupees 48.50 crore which was 6.2% of revenue in q4 fy21 segment revenue for the year grew 44% to rupees 3194.46 crore as compared to rupees 2218.72 crore in fy21 segment result was rupees 194.82 crore which was 6.1% of revenue in fy22 as compared to rupees 106.49 crore 4.8% of revenue last year order inflow for the quarter grew by 42% to rupees 932.05 crore as compared to rupees 656.54 crore in q4 fy21 our electromechanical projects business revival of capex cycle led to improved pace of project execution as compared to the previous quarter with continued focus on the make in india program order inflow from the factories data center and infrastructure sectors continued to be encouraging commercial building sector revival was also witnessed carry forward order book of the electromechanical project business was rupees 2295 crore as on march 31 2022 as compared to rupees 2149 crore as on march 31 2021 a growth of 6.8% segment wise break up of the carry forward order book of the electromechanical project business as of march 30 30 2022 is as follows and we and we share this uh, uh, with you once a year office it 24% metro rail 16% water nep project 16% industrial factory data centers all put together 13% hospitals 5% airports 5% malls 4% and all other customer segments put together 17% commercial air conditioning systems a healthy flow of opportunities from the industrial healthcare and government customer segments supported by the revival of demand from the manufacturing light commercial and education segments enabled growth for the commercial air conditioning business during the quarter we continue to maintain our number one position in conventional and inverter ducted air conditioning systems as well as crawl chillers we remain number two in brf and gained market share and moved up to the second position in screw chiller as well our international business the economic activities and consumer confidence continued in the middle east and enabled growth in revenue during the quarter increased demand from qsr and the pharma industry enabled growth for our refrigeration business during the quarter with a pick up in the business sentiment the prospect for growth of our international business in the middle east region continues to be positive the project business in qatar continued to do well the operations at the joint venture at malaysia continue to be impacted due to the restrictions on account of covid we will continue to focus on the expansion of the blue star product range and building brand awareness and brand visibility in different markets that we are present in i will now move on to segment 2 unitary products 
Segment 2 revenue grew 32.3% to Rs. 1034.01 crore in Q4 FY22 as compared to Rs. 781.81 crore in Q4 FY21. Segment result was Rs. 72.05 crore, 7% of revenue in Q4 FY22 as compared to Rs. 62.06 crore which was 7.9% of revenue in Q4 FY21. Continued headwinds in input costs disruptions in the international supply chain and increased supply lead time led to a drop in segment margins for the quarter. Revenue for the year grew by 39.4% to Rs. 2603.77 crore in FY22 as compared to Rs. 1868.28 crore in FY21. Consequently, segment results improved to Rs. 155.86 crore which is 6% of revenue in FY22 as compared to Rs. 108.82 crore which was 5.8% of revenue in FY21. Cooling and purification product business, strong pent-up demand coupled with positive consumer sentiment and an early onset of summer in some parts of the country enabled a 47% growth in revenue from our, for our room air conditioner business during the quarter. We grew faster than the market and ended the financial year with a market share of 13.25%, which was 13% in FY21. Our comprehensive range of affordable ACs continued to resonate well with the price sensitive customers and the first time buyers, especially in tier three, four and five markets. And we further consolidated our position as a mass premium brand in our target customer segments. Due to continuing increase in commodity prices and logistics costs, we have implemented a price increase of 2 to 3% effective April 1, 2022. Our commercial refrigeration business now. <clears throat> commercial refrigeration business witnessed growth momentum with demand for deep freezers, modular cold rooms, busy coolers, and supermarket refrigeration products from diverse segments such as dairy and ice cream processed foods, pharma, QSRs, and food delivery, etc. We continue to maintain leadership position in deep freezers, storage water coolers, and modular cold rooms. In modular cold rooms, demand from the QSRs has almost got restored back to pre-pandemic levels. Some of the breakthrough orders were from Ola Food Technologies, Reliance Retail, Dunzo Digital, Zomato, Dmart, and proprietary cold room customers for mushroom and dry fruit storage. We continue to enjoy high market share in pharma segments for products and solutions such as cold rooms and medical refrigeration products. We received large orders from Reliance Retail for supermarket refrigeration products for supply across the country apart from other retail players including Shell outlets. We also launched a new range of indigenously uh, uh, designed and manufactured deep freezers and augmented our manufacturing footprint with a new world-class manufacturing facility at WADA, which is expected to get operationalized soon. Segment three, professional electronics and industrial systems. Segment three revenue grew by 55.9% to Rs. 77.60 crore in Q4 FY22, as compared to Rs. 49.79 crore in Q4 FY21. Segment result was Rs. 14.34 crore, which is 18.5% of revenue in Q4 FY22 as compared to Rs. 7.22 crore, 14.5% of revenue in Q4 FY21. Segment revenue for the year grew by 40.1% to Rs. 247.35 crore as compared to Rs. 176.59 crore in FY21. Segment result was Rs. 42.49 crore or 17.2% of revenue in FY22 as compared to Rs. 33.81 crore or 19.1% of revenue in FY21. With the revival of corporate capex, we witnessed growth across all segments that we operate in. Growth in revenue from the healthcare and data security solutions business enabled a growth in revenue for the quarter. The testing machine business also continue to witness growth with a revival of investments in the manufacturing sector. Major orders backed were from Access Bank, HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank, JSW Steel and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, to name a few. 
with a wide portfolio of contemporary products and solutions forming part of our offering the prospects for this business segment continue to be positive our overall business outlook now robust demand witnessed throughout the quarter enabled us to end the year on a strong note with healthy growth across all the business segments after the washout of two consecutive summers we expect strong growth in q1 fy23 with ebbing of the pandemic impact the business and market disruptions have progressively reduced aiding growth and revival of opportunities the launch of a new range of products in room air conditioners and commercial refrigeration is expected to significantly aid growth going forward with the increase in corporate capex and revival of demand from traditional customer segments prospects for the electromechanical projects and commercial air conditioning business are encouraging given the ongoing geopolitical conflict between russia and ukraine input cost pressures and supply chain challenges are expected to persist in the short term however we have taken adequate measures to ensure availability of raw materials and components for the ongoing peak selling season uh, the cost optimization initiative and prudent working capital management will uh, help us to sustain growth and profitability we would like to build on the momentum in q3 fy22 and q4 fy22 into q1 fy23 and the subsequent quarters with that ladies and gentlemen we are done with the opening remarks Uh, I would uh, like to now pass it back to the moderator, who will open the floor to your questions. Uh, Mr. Tyagrajan uh, will answer uh, most of your questions. Uh, to the extent uh, we are unable to address all your questions, we will get back to you via email. With that, we are now open for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Bhumika Nair from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and congratulations for a good set of numbers. um so just wanted to understand this whole price hike and the cost escalations that we are seeing um if you you mentioned that you know in april we've taken about a 2 to 3% kind of a price hike now given the recent kind of you know march april due to the ge geopolitical issues the kind of cost escalations that we are seeing and the uh, and the freight costs etc which are also going up is this adequate enough to kind of take back our margins to that 8% plus trajectory and how much more will we need to take um also if you can talk about the impact on of uh, cost escalation once the be ratings kicks in from 1st of july that's my first question members of the management we cannot hear you at the moment Are you able to hear? Yes, now we can hear you. Please go ahead. So, as you may recall, we have launched a new range of uh, affordable premium air conditioners, uh, which are uh, re-engineered, and uh, the cost reduction has been achieved through this. Now, uh, that is a very fast action. That is, we have looked at the products. Uh, unwanted features have been removed, given the fact that you have. more than 90% of the buyers are first time buyers uh, you have uh, 65% of the buyers coming from tier 3 4 5 markets and the growth is driven by aspirational middle class you have 45% of the sales coming from consumer finance related then you can imagine they are looking for a product which is uh, functionally delivering air conditioning so uh, this is not only to manage the cost escalation we also wanted to grow our market share from 12 to 15 and uh, without addressing this segment of the customer or the belly of the market we will not reach there so therefore uh, the entire range uh, has been rejected now there are as many as 22 models which are currently available which are future ready in the sense it takes into account 
the energy label change that will take place on 1st July 2022. So you buy a four star now, it will continue to remain as a four star even when the energy label changes. Okay, that action is taken. Now, uh, there are a set of actions connected with the uh, procurement and the value chain. There is localization, there is backward integration, there are alternate vendors. So China uh, risk mitigation is part of our enterprise risk management framework that also has been addressed. There are a few component manufacturers, specifically the compressor manufacturer who is GMCC, who is the global leader. Uh, he is going to commence the production, trial production is on, that's what I understand. Therefore, you are going to have a component ecosystem developing in the country very fast, thanks to the PLI scheme. So, uh, the other part of it is connected with CCT. In all probability, we will come into the production in Q3 of FI22, which helps us uh, you, uh, which helps us actually in terms of the logistics cost. So incoming raw material today is coming to Narshiva port, all the way it goes to Kalam in Himachal Pradesh and the finished goods are moving from Kalam all over the country. Southern region constitutes 45% of the sales, so therefore uh, there is an inventory holding period, there is a logistic cost. So you can imagine around 10 to 20 day, 12 days of inventory will be held up in transit only. Three city as a location can receive the raw material in Yenur port or Kishwapurnam port, which are less than 50 kilometer distance from the factory. All the states, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Puducherry, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka can be served overnight from sea city. So there will be substantial cost savings once the sea city plant commences production. Now, we will, our, our principle is very clear. To the extent possible, we want to pass on the price increase to the market, but then the competition decides what, at what price we will be able to sell. So the goals are very clear. We will indeed pursue our market share goal of 15% by 2025. That goal remains unaltered and hopefully even by FI24, if we can achieve, depending on the market, Opening up, we will be able to do that. The second one is that we will continue to look at our products and make it affordable for the belly of the market. Three cost reduction levers, every possible lever will be used. And finally, I also have a feeling that you will have, you will witness softening of commodity prices later this year. Earlier we thought it will, the cycle will continue for 12 to 18 months. With this inflation and other measures that are taking place, I think it will come under control even by end of this calendar year. That's where we are. So taking all this into account, I think we will get back to 8 to 8.5% margin this year, operating margin. And you might have noticed another important development in the market. The advertising expense, what was uh, happening prior to COVID, it is almost rupees 100 crore lower than what it is. That is my estimate. You are not seeing so much of money being spent by the category in the market. So that is another lever the brands will have, not only Blue Star. So therefore, I would, uh, I would go with the assumption that it should be possible for us to do anything between 8 to 8.5% as against 7% what we have delivered in the year ended 31st March 2022. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Sorry, this elaborate answer will, will, will help others who had the similar question as well. Sure. So this this improvement in margin would be more back-ended. Near-term uh, pressure on margins would kind of continue given the cost escalations and, you know, these benefits out of Shri City to only be more towards the end of the year than in the... Oh, I, I, I think uh, Q1 itself you will start uh, witnessing. So you, you look at the margin of uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, the products have been launched only in the month of January, so the demand is good. My estimate is we should be witnessing something in Q1 itself. Got it, sir.
So the other thing was more, you did speak about, you know, indigenization and component ecosystem development over the medium term. But more from a very near term perspective, given the supply chain disruption that we're seeing and, you know, particularly in China lockdowns, et cetera. And on the flip side, we have a very strong surge in demand for March, April. Would there be shortage of material and inability to kind of supply to the strong demand uh, that comes in by the end of the month or, you know, by the end of the season in that sense in June, July? The shortage, I, I was the first one to talk about the shortage, the, the thing, even before automobile industry, the shortage started in December 2020. And everyone was ignoring that. The December 2020 to March 2021, huge component shortage, plus we had the ocean fright at uh, three times. And at that time, the automobile industry also didn't speak about shortage of semiconductors and other stuff. And that continues even today, that there is a challenge. The mitigation measure is you have to plan in advance. In other words, what we would have held as a 45-day inventory, now we are holding something like 90-day inventory. Certain items, uh, you know, mad rush to block the uh, quantities from the vendors like semiconductors. We are blocked till 2024 end. Uh, the quantities are blocked uh, by for, with the vendors. Right now, all that I can tell you is till July, we do not have a problem. You know, there was another madness that was going on that the market will grow by 50 to 75 percent this summer. I have been maintaining that it will be 20 to 25 percent market should grow over March 2000, sorry, summer 2019, which is April, May, June to July 2019. It should be 20 to 25 percent. If the market would have grown by 50 to 60 percent, there was another forecast, 75 percent growth over 2019. Summer there will be shortage. I don't think up to 30 percent growth there will be any shortage for Blue Star. Our goal is market may grow between 20 to 25. We will grow from 25 to 30 percent growth over 2019 summer. If that is the growth, we do not have shortage one or two locations, some SKU may be the shortage, but we are not worried about it. Till July, we don't have. Right now, August, September is being planned, but the feedback we have from the international vendors is by then the logistics bottleneck should be over. And from August, September, quite a few components are going to be available in India as well. Most importantly, the compressor should be available. Uh, drives we are no longer dependent on any imports of course the chips are required and I think it should ease out by August September. Thank you. I would request Ms. Nair to rejoin the queue for follow-up question. We would also request participants to limit your question to two at a time. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavan Bitlani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for a great set of performance. Uh, so I have two questions. One is uh, on the commercial refrigeration segment. Uh, what was the growth uh, in the segment in the fiscal year gone by and what percentage of the business uh, is the commercial ref? Uh, the second question is more on the services uh, part. So what is the share of the services uh, in, in, in our business, uh, I believe commercial refrigeration and both commercial air conditioning, uh, there will be an element of after sale services. And on a slightly longer period, do you believe that this share of services uh, grows as we see in some of the global multinationals and that kind of adds uh, to the uh, structural improvement in the margins for the company as a whole? I am not, not able to get the last part. Multinational, what is the connection? Uh, so w when we look at uh, some of the global companies like of Daikin, Johnson Control, so services is a significant part of the uh, profitability for these companies, uh, the after-sales services. Because in room air conditioners, after-sales is actually not there. Uh, but the companies like the OEMs like yours only do the after-sales in case of commercial refs and commercial air conditioning. So is, is that something that we see structurally going up as your install base rises and that kind of adds to your profitability on a longer period of time? Okay, the, uh, first of all, I wouldn't be able to, I don't know the financials of Daikin or uh, Johnson that to the breakup, uh, we do not have 
any such official information, I won't be able to comment on that. So the first part is uh, commercial refrigeration. Mm, we, we are the player with, uh, with the entire range other than the transport uh, refrigeration. So we do otherwise right from water cooler, bottled water dispenser, deep freezers, ripening chambers, cold rooms, uh, this part we do. Uh, we do not undertake there so far the turnkey projects uh, which, are, uh, which are not sizable but it will be involving quite a bit of uh, bottled material so we don't do that. Other than that in commercial refrigeration we are the largest player uh, holding more than 30% market share in every category. So if you look at uh, fast food chain uh, whether it is Yum or McDonald's or uh, any uh, even uh, food delivery like uh, Swiggy, Zomato, every, every one will be our customers. Ice cream, we will hold close to 40% market share in ice cream segment whether it is for a modular cold room or deep freezer. Uh, now, the, the, uh, to close the commercial refrigeration part, the problem is with the market size of that. It, India is yet to mature and it will continue to grow and one day it should be as large as room air conditioner but we are not there. The CAGR of close to 20% is being maintained. Uh, let us see how that goes. Coming to commercial air conditioning, we are number one in ducted air conditioning, ducted inverter, we are number one. There is a segment uh, which is VRS which you are all familiar with, we are number two there. And there are chillers, their multinationals are there in this country and we are number two there again. And uh, so uh, you are right, the service revenue comes from, predominantly from, service revenue comes from even room air conditioners because we are a large institutional player there. That other than the residential, perhaps we may be the largest institutional player for room air conditioners even, like a... Uh, ATM or, uh, or, or offices, quite a few national accounts by our split air conditioners. Uh, there the service revenue will be there, but uh, predominantly it comes from commercial air conditioning systems. Uh, as the volume grows, uh, the AMC revenue grows. Um, the, uh, it will become a selective disclosure if we are to say that service alone how much revenue we are earning or the profitability of that. It is uh, profitable and not only we do the annual maintenance contract, we sell spare parts, we also undertake uh, revamp and retrofit uh, and replacement. So uh, it, it, is, it is an integrated model uh, which uh, commercial air conditioning or commercial refrigeration business pursues. Thank you. Sure. Just a, a follow up on this, uh, more qualitatively, is the profitability uh, uh, higher than the uh, profitability of the original equipment sales? Uh, original equipment sale in a, at a gross margin level, operating margin level. Either way, so let's say, the, is the services margins uh, much higher than the uh, new product sales yeah, margins? The, the gross margin level both should be same, but uh, then in the, in, the, in the product manufacturing, you have the capex invested. In service, there is no capex that are in, you know, the, it is not a capital in, intensive one, okay? In the operating margin level, it will be much higher service. Sure. Yeah, thank you so much for taking my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Sharma from HDFC Standard Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, uh, you know, if you could talk about uh, the competitive landscape, uh, you know, on the room AC side, uh, any significant changes that you want to highlight, uh, you know, any players getting aggressive and all, you know, otherwise, uh, and, and also to kind of uh, connect it with the, uh, you know, the import ban on uh, ACs with gas, right? So has that led to any consolidation? Uh, yeah. yeah. I couldn't follow the last part, quote. No, so I meant, you know, post the ban which came in on, you know, uh, compressors uh, with gas-filled compressors, right? So has that led to any, uh, you know, any of the Japanese brands losing share? 
or have they kind of you know managed to now start uh, assembly uh, in India? This is what I meant. Yeah. So has that led to any consolidation? Is what I meant. The larger players. Yeah. The, the structural changes are as follows, like, uh, you know, who is supposed to be playing in this particular category, all are there, multinationals, you know, that one or two are left out and they will also be there. So the competitive landscape is not going to change, okay, who, whomsoever have to come in, they have come in. The second is it is driven by the penetration, which is at 6% and uh, we are of the view that it will, within three years it will reach 10% penetration. And the, therefore, uh, every player whomsoever was uh, playing will start playing very aggressively. This is the second part of it. The third is that the capacity is going to double within three year time thanks to the PLI scheme. Everyone have mm. invested there. And mm. the PLI, how it works? PLI works not based on the, in, the investment. Investment is actually one part of it, one x-axis you have got the incremental sale over FY21. So therefore, if someone invests in a PLI scheme, he won't earn the incentive unless and until he is showing the incremental sale over FY21 and the percentage of it. It is 6% of the incremental sale you will get as a PLI. So therefore, everyone will be trying to sell more in order to earn the incentive. Therefore, you can imagine Production capacity is doubling, they have to earn the PLI, therefore people will compete. In other words, the PLI, whatever companies are going to earn that 4,000, 5,000 crore will be discounted to the consumer only. I don't think it will add to the bottom line at the end of the day, but that is good because scale will be built and component ecosystem will come. The combination of this will result in higher margins, which is what happened across the globe. So the problem of this industry is still we are talking about a 15,000 crore industry. And uh, so why analysts are investing time itself, sometimes I wonder that it is, it is for a, such a huge country, 15,000 crore market uh, is very surprising, but good days are here. For next five years, it will be a golden period for room air conditioners. It will grow exponentially. One can be because of these factors I told you. There is a component ecosystem. Everyone have invested in PLI, and uh, the temperatures are going up. People want to uh, wa want to mitigate the summer by installing air conditioners. The tier three, four, five markets are ready to consume these products. Therefore, uh, I am certain that there will be accelerated growth. Now come to the competition. So uh, I am of the view the Indian players, including Blue Star, blossomed when liberalization took place. By chance, if uh, liberalization wouldn't have taken place and the Korean Japanese players wouldn't have come in, it will not be the Indian companies which will be shining. Uh, all of us began to grow, all of us began to invest in R&D manufacturing and uh, you are seeing the results now. The Indian players are doing well despite the multinational competition. So here is the period, there is a high growth period, uh, intense competition, it will benefit companies like Blue Star. that is how we look at it. So, uh, and the, the, there are no challenges whatsoever that, uh, you know, the, uh, the legislation like gas fill should not come. It is fine. Yeah. In any case, people are ready to manufacture yeah. here. See, the manufacturing hesitancy was basically because of two reasons. Number one is that you do have uh, the, uh, the uh, scale issue. The second is that you are, you are not uh, able to... Uh, you, there was a, if you want to quickly enter the market, go ahead and enter. But that is deterred now, one, because of the legislation. The second is the energy label changes itself. You, you, uh, you know, everyone will have to develop a new product for a new energy label, even if there is a vendor in China. But uh, those days are over. And you will see an Indian component ecosystem, large number of units manufactured in India, and the consumption growth. Uh, so it is good. Uh, we will be able to compete as far as Blue Star is concerned in, in none of the parts, whether it is a product, pricing, promotion, mm -hmm. distribution, uh, mm -hmm. we, we may not fall short of anyone else and where there is a gap, we are already acting and investing in.
Okay, wonderful. Uh, that, thanks for the detailed answer, sir. And just uh, another one on the overall uh, industry growth, you know, in volumes uh, for the current fiscal. Any number you want to put there versus, uh, you know, I think 19 was the peak volumes, I think, last time around. Uh, so where do you think this year could turn out to be? So uh, right from February, I have been saying that the market should grow between 20 to 25 percent during the summer season. And uh, the our target is to grow between 25 to 30 percent. And uh, they, when the summer is intense, uh, they, they, there have been reports that it will grow by 50 percent, 70 percent, so on and so forth. But I think at uh, that kind of growth, a material will not be available. But then you have seen the interest rate EMIs are going up. So there will be some kind of uh, correction. So I, I think the, the range is 25 to 30 should happen. Thank you. I would request Mr. Sharma to rejoin the queue. In the interest of time, we would request participants to limit your question to one at a time now. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ranjit Shivram from Mahindra Manulife Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Congrats on good set of numbers. Um, sir, one thing which I see is that the trade receivables have increased by close to 400 crores and uh, Inventories have increased close to 260 crore. So, what's your uh, is that a timing issue, or you uh, is that some conscious decision on the inventories at least given the summers? Mr. Neeraj Basu will respond to that. Yeah. Uh, hi, Ranji. Thanks for the question. See, it's all uh, linked with the scale uh, step change that happened in FY22. So, if you see our uh, revenue growth uh, specifically in quarter four is uh, close to 40 percent and obviously that results in uh, higher billing and obviously uh, uh, you know some of that billing uh, will be reflected in receivables it's all normal nothing to be worried about it's all uh, uh, fine and collectible now as far as inventory is concerned there are two reasons one mr tyagarin already covered um, we have consciously taken a call to um, uh, to advance procurement of uh, some long lead time raw material components because we wanted to make sure our quarter one production runs uh, normally, so partly it is that, and also the remaining part again is the same scale change uh, reason. And obviously, as you heard him talk about growth that's expected in uh, in the next financial year, and some some of that was uh, to support that. So it's all uh, absolutely uh, you know normal, and we are uh, uh, continuing to look at very healthy operating cash flows, as you heard uh, us speak about it in the beginning as well. Thank you. I would request Mr. Shivram to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Anupam Gupta from IIFL Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Tyagarajan. Um, you gave uh, you gave a pretty detailed uh, picture on the portfolio uh, changes which you are doing. Uh, similarly, can you comment on the uh, distribution side of it, how you are expanding? So I think last year you were at close to about 7,000 retail points, uh, which were you were there. And you have talked about higher focus on the north um, and also on the tier three, four, five market. So just give us slightly more color on how the distribution is being focused on for uh, driving this growth. Uh, thank you. So the uh, they uh, you know there has been a, a systemic change that has been happening. Uh, you know while we were worried about two summer seasons or lost uh, so on and so forth. Uh, what has been happening is uh, the one, uh, the e-commerce part of it. Today around 17%, uh, I don't know, the summer season it may be 20% of the sales may be happening through e-commerce. That is one part of it. Uh, there we were hesitant for the simple reason, uh, the, the pricing is the only thing uh, that the e-commerce uh, platform uh, drives the sales and uh, we were worried about our uh, profitability, but we got that right. Uh, for the past uh, couple of years, our share in e-commerce is com coming closer to the share of the industry itself. So that is not an issue. Now, uh, there are uh, modern retailers or the power retailers uh, who are having multiple stores and they are their behavior will be similar to that of uh, the e-commerce. Uh, so therefore, uh, that is uh, that is also a significant segment that is there. So we handle e-commerce as well as modern trade. These two, 
uh, we are not behind at all. We 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 are well versed there. There are dedicated teams, and everything that is that needs to be done has been done in terms of product prices, service standards, uh, profitability, so on and so forth. The area you mentioned is right. It is to do with the North Indian market, which is highly price sensitive. Number one. Number two is uh, geographically it is well spread. And other than the cities I am talking, like like for example, you uh, you take something like Moradabad, Neerad, all these markets will be very significant markets, uh, and it will continue to grow. And therefore, our uh, our uh, how we do is that we do have the estimate of a town wise market and what our share should be. So if our all India market share is 13.25 percent, why in Moradabad we are not 13.25 percent? Which country is selling? Where we are not selling? Now it will not be a retailer directly; it will be a distributor, which means one distributor handling some 600, 700 uh, sub dealers, and uh, we are correcting that part of it. Right now it is not about the outlet numbers. I have stated in in our interactions again and again. that uh, appointing a dealer is the easiest of the job for the simple reason he is going to ask you for certain commission structure and quite a few dealers will be asking you for a display unit quite a few dealers will be also charging for the space and quite a few dealers will ask for a in shop demonstrator so where when you walk into a store the in shop demonstrators are all placed by in most stores it is placed by the brands actually so therefore appointing a dealer is not the issue the issue is that which are those potential counters where your share is low how you will bring it up in line with the all india average this is the process that we are on we have achieved the significant success from q3 onwards q3 q4 our numbers are good because of the corrections that have taken place in the north indian market and this exercise will continue through summer and beyond so our process is well defined there i do not have any concern with regard to that as well now the connected aspect is you have got a dealer you have got uh, the product out there you have got a strategy to reach that market share but then the pull for the brand so the very reason why a, a company like blue star which is close to eight decades uh, of existence uh, as a seen as an engineering company we are ensuring that our uh, connect with the consumer for room air conditioner is perfect that is why virat kohli was brought in and he will continue to be our brand ambassador so that distribution part is also taken care of and we in terms of media again the vernacular dailies we have been doing for the past couple of years this summer it is going on and to our surprise the digital consumption is also high in tier 3 4 5 towns so significant amount of our advertising is in digital mediums as well like uh, our, we, this year we will this summer we are spending close to 30% of our advertising expenses in digital so that should answer your question thank you the next question is from the line of sandeep tulsian from jm financial please go ahead uh yeah a uh, very good afternoon uh, so my first question is uh, pertaining to uh, the order inflows uh, we have reported a very strong growth in inflows as well as execution in the current quarter so if you could highlight uh, give more color uh, where are these orders coming in from are there any large orders uh, you know which got concentrated in the fourth quarter or is it more uh, small value orders uh, many number of small value orders which are driving this growth and also if you could give the market share in each of the categories uh, the ducted vrf as well as crucialers where we are that's the first question so i i think you know the carried forward order book is uh, 3253 crores as of 31st march 2022 uh, roughly around 10% higher than the previous period that is 31st 2021 order inflow has been uniform throughout the quarter and uh, the the segment 1 uh, it it is not seasonal in nature the orders uh, keep flowing but in terms of the execution it uh, the q4 may be a much bigger quarter compared with other quarters the orders are coming from uh, first one is the manufacturing 
sector. The capacity expansion is happening. PLI is applicable for quite a few sectors, including mobile phones, so on and so forth. Automobile, EV, uh, say for example, the Vola uh, factory uh, MET has been done by us. So um, the, the first segment is, that is driving growth is the manufacturing, followed by data center. Uh, we are a leading player there. The third one is connected with the uh, officer segment itself, specifically IT. You know, some point of a time in 2020, we shared with you, we are worried that uh, the world has changed. The, I don't know whether people will go back to office, so on and so forth. Slowly, IT itself is consuming a lot of office space, so it has come back. Now, uh, this is our, and uh, then you have a, a, the infra segment, uh, airport, metro railway, water. Uh, this part is the next one that is driving. Now, go to the uh, package air conditioning, DRF, which are light commercial uh, space. Uh, there was a lull, uh, but again, here manufacturing is driving number one. The second is connected with the uh, small hotel. Uh, small offices, uh, many healthcare, uh, you know, 50 bed hospital, 100 bed hospital, uh, these are the growth drivers. And uh, some segments which used to do well, they, that's not happening. We are wait and see, like marriage halls or educational institutions. I think it will come back. Now, uh, the uh, geographically, if you see, uh, I have shared this again, uh, the tire three, four are doing extremely well. In a dealer award, you will see it is not a Bombay dealer who is number one, but a Belgaum dealer will be number one or a Aurangabad dealer. That, that's how it is happening there because those cities are beginning to con air condition the shop, showroom, boutiques, uh, so on and so forth. Now go to, uh, go to the market share part of your question. So in the MEP part of it, uh, it is the market is very huge. We are selective. We are interested in doing the job where the cash flows are good and it is profitable. Uh, otherwise, we are not madly running after. We can scale up, but we will be measured there because we want to improve the margin there. We want to have a clean balance sheet. That is our goal there. But still, it will grow at 25% CAGR. Market share has got no meaning there. And uh, yeah, even in an infra pro project like an airport or metro, you may be ending up being a L1 in order to grow your market share. So we, we are very clear there what we will do. But we, we will grow still at 25% because there are shortage of MAP contractors. Now, uh, the uh, market share for chillers, uh, we should be close to 18%. Uh, in case of VRFs, uh, we will be close to between 20 to 22%. And again in VRFs, we are not playing in the residential tower segment, uh, which are uh, large buildings which are equipped with the, uh, with the uh, VRF system. Uh, so uh, we, 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 we go very cautiously there because these residential towers get uh, concluded and the jobs get extended and the occupants will have to come in to accept your product and uh, it, it is a different ball game altogether. So therefore, uh, even without that residential segment, uh, we will be having 22% uh, market share. We are number two there. Uh, in Chiller, we are number two. And uh, we, uh, it is pertinent to note that as an Indian player against multinationals, we are number two. And in inverter ducted or the ducted, which are consumed largely by shop showroom boutiques, uh, we are number one. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spa Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is with respect to the cooling product segment, the breakup between air conditioners and non air conditioner revenue, and what kind of revenue growth do you expect in the entire cooling product uh, segment for FI23? Uh, last part is what kind of? Revenue growth, growth do you expect for FI23 uh, for cooling products? 
Uh, fine. So the uh, you know if I if I were to give a breakup, that will also be selective disclosure. So the 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 question is all that I can say is substantial part is room air conditioners because refrigeration market is very very negligible. Okay. So uh, the the uh, and we we operate as I told you that we do not operate in refrigeration projects. We do not operate in the uh, transport refrigeration. So the addressable market which we will do will be 4,000, and the 16,000 crores will be the uh, will be the market for the room air conditioning in a normal year. In the COVID impacted year, it may be 12,500 to 13,000 crores. Uh, so it will be a selective disclosure there. Now, if you our our estimate is, or I won't say our estimate, our ambition is to grow that segment by at least 25%. And going by what is happening in the summer, it should be possible. So the cooling products, the entire segment you are saying for FI20. That's right. That's right. So God is there. And uh, with respect to the margins in the EMC business, it has been uh, quite healthy at 6%. Um, are you confident of maintaining such kind of margins? These are the earlier, we, we used to clock 4.5% margins. Will we be able to sustain the 6% margin? I think so. What we have delivered, it should be possible to sustain and even improve upon because the the build construction cycle is on. I I know you uh, you you are, you are always skeptical about this segment. I know that for a decade together, but your good time has come. This construction cycle is on. Contractors are not available, and one is rushing like those days. That uh, how fast you can execute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naval Shade from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I have one question. Uh, can you elaborate on that 47% growth in RAC, uh, how various regions would have done like east, west, north, south? Because south, uh, as per our checks, suggested that was quite uh, kind of uh, uh, weak in March but picked up in April. So how things have uh, panned out in uh, 4Q? I don't. I do not see any uh, difference at all. You know, uh, the the uh, big quarrel I have with analysts is this: you are comparing the growth with a COVID impacted year, okay? And uh, in the COVID impacted year, you know the different locations had different uh, uh, lockdown restrictions. You know, somebody allowed the retail, somebody allowed the e-commerce. It was a madness last year. So I will not go by. Last year to this year, the growth has come from which region because it is based on somebody poorly performed will show a huge growth. With my team also, that is the same thing I keep pointing out. Don't say it is 50% last year or performance was bad. So the, the, if you ask me right now what is happening, right now, the growth is uh, significant uh, in the double digits uh, in every location, including very large markets like Chennai. Uh, East may be relatively lower growth. And uh, I, you know, in this I will look at only uh, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, entire NCR and Punjab. And uh, for us in UP, it is building our market share, we don't. And every location here are competing with each other and all of them are doing that. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manoj Gori from Equitas Securities. Please go ahead. Manoj Gori from Equitas Securities, your line has been yeah. muted. Well, my, my question has been answered. Many thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Praveen Sahai from Edelweiss Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, my uh, uh, is there any down trading happening in the market, and uh, how is the inventory level uh, in the you know uh, in the market right now? I think uh, you know the information again. Uh, I know about Blue Star. We do not have an inventory problem. At least we do not foresee that till June, uh, definitely. But uh, what I am being told by the dealers is there are shortages in uh, quite a few markets. And uh, that's what I was told. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sujit Jain from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, so just wanted to check the uh, 10 to 11 percent uh, price increase you would have taken for room ACs for FI22. Was that sufficient uh, for the RM inflation? And if that was not sufficient, to what extent it was not sufficient? Uh, you know that you, if you see our operating margin from 7.9, it has come down to 7. Okay. Uh, so the question is, it is. I understand in the operating margin level we could manage because there were some cost leverage in the operating cost. Uh, I think it is around 2.5% uh, uh, lesser. That in if, in other words, if you would have increased the prices by something like 14.5%, we would have maintained the margin. But it is not the case uh, because the price is decided by the market and you have got certain goals in terms of the volumes. And, and after uh, I think I think in Q1 uh, that shouldn't be because in April we have taken the price increase. In taking price increase, we are not dictated by anyone at all. We we do it, and uh, right from uh, January that's uh, 2021. That is what we are doing. And after April price increase, now you are fully covered for the price inflation in the raw materials. Not sure. They, for this, uh, we are sure up to summer. We do not know about uh, July, August, September at all. The, the, our decision is that uh, if, if, uh, even though this conversation will be uploaded in SETI website or whatever it is, I, I am making this statement. If the sale is very high and you are running out of the inventory and you have to do some quick purchases, which is not the case. If that happens, uh, we may have to review the prices by June uh, first week itself. If uh, the demand is like what we I am saying, the market may grow by 25, we will grow by 30%. Our stated review of prices is July first week. That time, we have to see July, August, September, what will be the raw material prices that will be prevailing. Now, uh, I have also stated this in the television interviews, if the commodity prices come down due to this inflation containment measures, we will be a brand to go ahead and even reduce the prices if required. So, the, the, the uh, decision for July, August, September, but that decision will cover the festival season as well. Uh, we will take it uh, on July. And uh, you know one more thing, with the interest rate hike, the EMI is going to go up or the consumer finance uh, related, uh, you know, that uh, buyout uh, expenses we will have. So therefore, Q1 is not a problem. Q2 revision by July 1. If by, uh, the market continues to explode, we run out of the material, by June first week we have to look at it depending on how we are going to mobilize this material. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishal Biraya from Max Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, so in the uh, new plant at VADA that we plan, that we plan to commission, and specifically for commercial refrigeration, what, what could be the increase in localization that we will see, and how does this compare to our peers in commercial tech specifically? Thank you. Uh, so this factory is coming up uh, basically for uh, our, first of all, we had a factory in Ahmedabad which manufactured only 400 liter and 500 liter deep freezers. Uh, there is 300 liter, there is 250 liter, there are 100 liter, there is 75 liter. Now, uh, you can easily imagine that uh, the predominantly the deep freezers are used for ice cream distribution. The OEMs are the ice cream brands. Now, what is actually, what has been happening is that when the ice cream penetration goes to smaller towns, smaller retailers, that, so what is, how are they going to grow their business? They will go on appointing the retailers, and those Kirana shops are going to be pro selling through with a deep freezer that will occupy a space. So uh, you can look at this trend. Over the years, the, uh, the skew is towards 300 liter, 200 liter, 100 liter. Because in a tire five times, that retailer's consumption it will be lower, he will not uh, stay. So the demand for lower capacity deep freezers has been growing. 
and this was uh, this was manufactured for us in china two three oems were manufacturing for us uh, but in line with our erm or the enterprise risk management framework we wanted to deal with china the work has been going on for the past three years as per that we decided to go ahead and do 300 liter this year 200 liter next year in the meanwhile even 400 500 ahmedabad plant has reached its full capacity this summer with great difficulty we are managing now the ahmedabad plant so therefore in wada factory is coming up a for expanding 400 500 liter and 300 is fully indigenized this year we are stopping the imports and the later part the the next summer season 250 then later on 100 there is a phased program uh, this, this is the reason for setting up this factory so therefore it is to do with the capacity expansion indigenization now you ask a question to what extent it is backward integrated it is only the compressors that are imported there uh, all other components are available in india it, it is uh, puff insulation it is a sheet metal it is condenser uh, so the everything else is available here it is only the compressor it is not manufactured in the country and it i don't think it will be manufactured that we depend on the international vendors Okay, and so when you compare us to some of the peers that we have in commercial refrigeration, how would, uh, where, where would we stand in terms of uh, import container localization and also in terms of uh, margins? Could you elaborate a bit on us? So how do you see uh, this high growth? Seg so basically, is operating leverage here playing out because of the high growth uh, and we are working at localization currently? As I told you, it is a, we are addressing a 4,000 crore market and uh, the, it is highly fragmented. Uh, there are d deep freezer players, but there may not be cold room player. There, are, there may be cold room player, but he may not be doing ripening, for example. And uh, there are uh, regional players which will not be preferred by large national accounts. Say, for example, brands like uh, Amul, Mother Diary, Yum. Uh, Swiggy, these are all uh, large national customers and uh, like uh, Reliance for example, uh, Reliance, uh, the retail uh, we, we, is a very major customer for us. So therefore it is highly fragmented. There you have numerous local players that market is, you know, I will compare this to 1990 air conditioner market. It will change because uh, first January 2023, there is an energy labeling that is coming for deep freezer. At that point of time, you will see some kind of change consolidation that is taking place. But otherwise, if you take deep freezers standalone, uh, we will be the market leader, number one. And uh, the, if you take the modular cold room, we will be number one. If you are looking at uh, across, whether it is a fruit, vegetable, flower, floriculture, agriculture, sericulture, including silk, there are many applications. We will be the only player uh, dominating in that segment. But our problem is the market size is not significant uh, enough. Uh, the future, it should be one of the very large business. Five-year time, I'm seeing it uh, is a very big game changer for Blue Star. That's why we continue to invest in manufacturing or R&D. So if you ask me the profitability, I, we don't have any clue at all. There are many, many guys who are importing from somewhere and no results are published. And uh, you can go to uh, register of companies information. That will be also sketchy. So I, I do not know. Um, if you are broadly ask me, is commercial refrigeration business more profitable than room air conditioner? Uh, yes, it is more profitable than room air conditioners. Um, and again, I am comparing with uh, benchmark room air conditioner margin prevailing in the country. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, it was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. P. Thiagarajan for closing comments. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. With this, we conclude this quarter's earnings call. Do feel free to revert to us in case, of any, in case any of your questions were not fully answered, and we will be happy to provide you additional details by email or in person.
Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you. On behalf of Blue Star Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.